Ladies and gentlemen, the press conference will start in less than three minutes. Please take your seats. On the translation system, channel one is Arabic, channel two is English. Ladies and gentlemen, may I kindly ask you to take your seats and may I remind our uh, esteemed photographers not to stand in the center rail because the press conference will be streamed online. Just for your information and before the press conference starts, uh, it will be in two parts. The first part will be the officials, President Diak and President Dahlan. And on the second part, we'll have three uh, multiple Olympic and uh, world champions uh, staying here with us and uh, speaking about uh, tomorrow's event. May I repeat that the translation system, channel one is for Arabic, channel two is for English.
A note to photographers, please keep the central ale always clean, please, be for uh, television purposes and the live streaming. Thank you. May I also repeat for the people who have just joined us, channel one is for Arabic, channel two is for English. Ladies and gentlemen, the press conference is about to start. Presidents Diak and Dahlan are now entering the room, so I kindly ask you to take your seats. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the official press conference for the Diamond League to be held here in Doha tomorrow is about to start. I kindly ask all photographers not to stand in the middle aisle because the press conference is stream, uh, streamed online. Good morning, everyone, and uh, good morning to our global audience who is following today's press conference via internet. Um, would like to welcome you all here in Doha for the sixth edition of the Diamond League, which uh, will be hosted tomorrow at the Qatar Sports Club. May I now pass the floor to uh, Mr. Diak, the IAAF Chairman and uh, President of the Diamond League. Mr. President. Okay. I speak English. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I am very pleased to it's the sixth time I am at the opening of the Diamond League. I I just to underline that coming in Doha is not new for me because as you know I, I was there in seven seven ninety seven. The first time we had this great meeting, but just for men, I had as very popular after that. I had a lot of protest, but in '98 we had a wonderful uh, Grand Prix meeting, and in 2000 we are even the final in this country. It was a choice of this country to use the sport to build something special. And we are very pleased to see the Emir at this moment, Fund of Athletics, saying, okay, I will make athletics great in this country. So I think it's not normal that for this time we are together in May. I have to underline that it will be the, my last <laughs> occasion to talk to you about the Diamond League because, as you know, in three months' time, or three months and a half, I will hand over to somebody else to continue to do this wonderful job. But I think Diamond League is a, we used to say that is the crown of our, the pearl of our World Athletic Series. We have to build up through this one-day meeting to build up great. Uh, I think the one we are facing here tomorrow will be one of the greatest because I, I look on what I this present to me, but a lot of great athletes are there. 
I think, outside the World Championships and the Games, we have to make it a great, 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 great event going all the season, not only the diamond, but also the challenge. During five stage, five season, the Diamond League established itself in the hearts and mind of fans worldwide. 14 meetings in Asia, Europe, the Middle East, and the USA. A truly international circuit, unlike the European only Golden League. 32 events, the discipline with the best athlete in the world competing for $8 million in prize money. IWF Diamond League I do play the Diamond League. Ah, it's a problem. <laughs> Including winners of global title from before 2012, the Doha meeting with feature 16 Olympic gold medalist and 26 world champions, champion. 10 of the 2014 Diamond League winners are also to be, be competing. This year, the IWF Diamond League begins in a, with a bang. Two meetings in Asia on the same weekend and here in Doha and in Shanghai next Sunday. The press conference of Doha meeting are being stream, streamed live on the IWF Diamond League website. The city is more visible to fans around the world than ever, ever before. We are especially delighted that in the last two weeks, both Eurosport and BBC have agreed new long-term broadcasting deals with Diamond League. Our vision in 2009 was to create a new exciting product for athletics top invit invitational circuit. The IWF Diamond League definitively offers the best athletics entertainment outside the IWF World Championship and Olympic Games. During five this five season, uh, Diamond League has been established as a great moment. With the launch of a new website this year, a much praised APP and extensive use of social media, we are confident that the series will continue to attract younger audience and to grow in importance. While there remain many challenges ahead, the IWF firmly believes that we have made an exceptional good start in these five past years. This is my last year presidency of IWF, as I said at the beginning. But I have no doubt that we have established a good platform on which my successor will be able to further enhance the global statute, visibility and reach of the IWF Diamond League. I add to be clear that we are making it with a meet organizer we use for decades to organize their meeting. And our dream is to build a product, not only everyone taking care of his own meeting and trying to make it successful, but to build up a pro product. We need the support not only of this meet organizer, but the support of the athletes, knowing people were saying that there is no head to head, but is a lot of head to head meeting during the Diamond League. A lot of me. 
possibly we can talk about there is not enough 100 in 100 and so on, but there is a lot of going on. And I'm very proud to be able to achieve the possibility of having in 32 events, not in 14, in the, in the light in the Golden League, in 32 events, athletes having the possibility at the end of the year, no, going all over the year in different competition, and at the end being able to win their diamond and to win their prize money and to make their, their life. People are telling me in the IWF, we are putting money in. I said, yeah, we, the money we put, we put it to the athletes. And the athlete has the most important issue in our sport. The most important thing is the issue our, our athletes. It's not the white man sitting with a white boo it's, it's the athletes. If they are putting money for, to help them to make their life and to continue to become more and more professional. They used to tell me we are professional. I said, no. You are not yet, you are allowed now to get money, but you are not professional. Because the footballer, professional football, when he's injured and is the home, he get 100,000 euro a week. <laughs> this one is a professional. We are trying to make it more and more professional, and I think that I am going to hand over to someone else, but I think we will continue in that direction with your support, all of you. Thank you very much, and thank you for our friend of uh, Qatar for having fulfilled their commitment to say, we make great this sport in this country. And I am happy that finally, in 2019, we will have these world championships here in Qatar. People are saying, yeah, yes, it will be in September. He used to. We have, I was dreaming to have one year, the season finishing, by the World Championship and not in Zurich or, or, or Brussels. Finishing by, finishing your World Championship to go home. So we are in that direction. So thank you for your attention and I'm at your disposal. Thank you. Thank you, President Yak. Now the floor goes to uh, President Dahlan. Please, Mr. President. Dear Mr. President, my friend Lamin, Members of the media family, friends of sports, welcome to Qatar. Tomorrow is a big day for athletics in Qatar. We at Qatar Athletic Federation feel very happy and proud to host the sixth edition of Doha Diamond League. League. Doha Diamond League opened the season and anticipation is mounting. In line with our nation vision, for 2030, and with the unlimited support of His Highness, the Emir of the State of Qatar, we want to make sports for life, a lasting legacy for our nation. We have set high standards in organizing such an important and prestigious sporting event in previous years, and we aim to continue at the highest possible level. We have the expertise and the know-how. We have the means to justify our role as a key and trusted partner to the IWF. The International Association of Athletic Federation has honored and put faith in us by awarding us the kickoff Diamond League meeting each season. May I remind you all that only 11 countries all over the world and none other from the Middle East are privileged to host a part of the Diamond League. We are ready to welcome the world's elite athletes, demonstrating our commitment that this year's meeting will be a very high caliber, with Olympic and world champions competing, as it has always been the case. The focus is on the athletes. The protagonist of the Doha Diamond League coming from 54 nations from all across the world. 12 regular Olympics champions and 11 current world champions will do their best tomorrow. 
and overall 16 Olympic champions and 26 world champions, as well as 10 diamond, 10 diamond races winners of the 2014, will shine right here in Doha. It is not a secret that the athletes love competing in Doha. For the facilities we offer, for our warm hospitality, and of course, for our ideal weather condition, which enables them to achieve a high standard of performance. Therefore, many of Doha Diamond League performance remains on top of the world list until the end of the season. As you all are aware, Doha Diamond League is being graded by IWF and global media as one of the best in the series. Nevertheless, we know that there is always room for improvement, and our aim remains to work even harder in order to remain at the top. I trust you all, I, I trust you also how successful we are last year, even in field where there was potential for development. The most important thing in order to succeed is to take responsibility as initiative. We have gained valuable experience in hosting large-scale athletics events with global impact, and this is exactly the, re the reason why the International Association of Athletic Federation has entrusted us with the honor and responsibility to host the 2019 World Athletics Championship, the crown jewels of global sports. Team efforts and expertise are the basic ingredients of success. And we will do our best to deliver, once again, successful and memorable Diamond League, a great opening in here in Doha. See you tomorrow at the stadium, where after the end of the competition, we will also offer a live concert with a popular artist. Once again, dear friends, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Now we'll open the floor for some questions. I kindly ask you to raise your hand, state your name and uh, media organization, and of course wait for the microphone since uh, the press conference is streamed online. Um, any questions? The gentleman in the back. Hey. Yes. Thank you. Um, uh, David Harding, Agence France Press. My question is for Mr. Al Hamad. Uh, given what you've just said about the expertise of Qatar in hosting events, is it inevitable that Qatar will bid for the 2024 Olympics? Summer Olympics. Could you repeat your question because I cannot hear you. I'll just wear this one I think is better. Uh, yep, yeah, sorry. David Harding, Agence France Press. Uh, given what you've just said about the expertise of Qatar, in hosting events, is it inevitable that uh, the country will bid for the 2024 Olympics? I think this is a dream for everybody to organize an Olympics. But talking from my position as uh, president of uh, Qatar Athletic Federation, I can assure you one thing, that we have organized the Grand Debris, Diamond League, Final Grand Debris, and the World Indoor Championship, and now we are going towards the 2019. Hosting uh, an Olympics is, is something on the level of the state. This is a country's uh, objective. So we as uh, Qatar Athletic Federation, once we have received instruction that the government is willing to host, we will be more than happy to participate on working on the, on the bidding file. But for the time being, I have no other information that whether we are going to, go to do it or not. But we will be more than happy to, do, to, to participate in that one. Another question? The gentleman here. Could you please give a microphone to Larry? This is for President Diak. 
This is Larry Eater with the Running Network. President, recently we heard at Asoif that swimming and gymnastics are getting more revenue from the Olympics. Do you consider this a defeat for athletics? I think that in the, in the, the uh, Olympics, I think you used to be the only athlete uh, of sport in Group A. And uh, having a greatest share in the money. In London, we got 45 million. And swimming and uh, swimming and, uh, and gymnastic, we were in Group B, got 25. Now there is a move pushing uh, uh, swimming and gymnastic to group A. Now we are three. So we are need to have more money in the, in, in. I know I'm not against seeing IOC say, make, saying I have enough money and swimming and, and kids are, are, uh, are swimming and gymnastic are successful enough. I give them 45 like athletics. There is no my problem. The problem I have is to say we are going to reduce the money given to, to athletics because we want to go give the money, more money to somebody else. There I said, no, it's not possible. possible. I was ready to have a reduction of the, the 45 because you know that in London we were 26 Olympics of sport. In, in, 20, in, in Rio we will be 28. So our, to have a reduction of 2 million from our 45 was not a problem for me. I consider that was, was good, no problem. Now, but uh, now swimming as 32, uh, uh, gymnastics 32, and athletics is proposed 40. 40. I and accept, I said, we cannot expect. But this problem is, 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 is we found a solution. The solution because I, I also a, a contact direct contact with the IOC. Don't worry about that. I was expecting to have 43. I think we will have more than 43 in the in the revenue of Rio de Janeiro. And and for the for the future, I think my successor they will fight to have. This position of athletics maintain. We make the games. Everyone, Sam Arams was very keen on that. I think it was not the case of our colleague from Bel Belgium, but the, the one who arrived now, I know, know very well, he was a colleague of Sam Arams. He knows what is athletics in the, in, the, in, in, in the Olympics. The Olympics start the, on the six, six, seven days. There's a, this is the moment when all the world is together. We are the only sport we can make it universal. And we are the, old, the sport we feel 80,000 stadium every day for nine days. Morning and evening. Thank you. Any other question? Gentleman here in the front. Kindly state your name and media organization, Good please. morning, uh, Gerald Imray from the AP. Um, President Dieck to you and, and maybe to Nick Davis. I, I wondered if the idea of could um, update us on the, the Russian marathon runner, Lilia Shobokova. Uh, there was a case that the IAAF pursued with, with CAS to appeal her two-year ban to four. This case was not heard and, and we haven't uh, received a reason why. Um, I, I wonder if you're able to, to say if the IAAF is still pursuing this case and, and what exactly um, is going on there. Thank you, sir. I think these cases are, are in, 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 uh, in, in, in CAS. And you know that uh, in CAS, we, I used to have a clear position. When a case is in CAS, 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 CAS has, to, has to decide who we defend our point of view. But if you can decide is the final decision, we have to accept it. All the cases we are referring, referred now, the Russian case referred to CAS, will be decided by the case. 
et qu'elle casse, une des décisions lui est acceptée par IWF. Laisse-moi me faire une petite réflexion. If, just a clarification. Um, it's the hearing at CAS that's been postponed. So the CAS is still hearing this case. It's still open. It's still pending between IWF and CAS. So I think there's a little bit of a misunderstanding. The only thing that's been postponed is the hearing of CAS. Um, so this is ongoing. We cannot speak about this in detail at this point in time, but we expect a resolution very quickly. I think probably within the next week or so. Yeah. Sorry, I can't hear that. Hold on a second, you need the microphone. I'm sorry, you, you'll be aware that there are some reports that the case has been settled out of court, but you're saying that the IWF is still appealing the case and pursuing it. No, the, the, the CAS will decide in the next probably week, we can say that. But at the moment, it's still an open court. The only thing that's changed has been the postponement of the hearing. So it's not exactly a settlement, a separation. It's not a closure of the CAS. CAS the CAS dossier is still open, and the IWF is involved in that. Okay. We have uh, time for one more question to the officials. The gentleman there on the, third, on the fourth row, please. Thank you. My name is uh, Elias Makori from the Daily Nation in Kenya. I have a question for President Diak and uh, President Alamad. Uh, President Diak, now that you are leaving, what, when history is written, what would you like to be remembered as having done for athletics? What is the big, biggest achievement? And to President Alamad, um, I know 2019 is still a long way away, but we are hearing that um, the marathon will be run at night. Is it confirmed or you are working on that? Maybe you can update us on that. To me, a uh, difficult question for me because, you know, I was in IWF since ni 39 years. You are not born, many of you. You are not born. <laughs> and and uh, when I arrived in IWF, women were not able to run more than 3,000. When I came to IWF, you cannot get more than two dollars a day as pocket money. That was the worst. What that was IWF. Some country like uh, Great Britain had eight what, and me Senegal I one what. China was out, and so on, so on, and so on, so on. So it, this is a lot of achievement we made. I changed completely this sport in in this this from '76 to now. But I, if I, I have to underline that all this we make it as a team. We work together. When I talk about one country, one world, people said you are mad. You cannot expect Senegal to have the same word that the United States. I said, it's what we want. And we made it, but we take it 11 years to make it. We make it. Everyone was expecting that when we arrive at this moment, Senegal and the other small nation will destroy IWF. Not only on, they don't destroy IWF, but finally a Senegalese became president. <laughs> I became president for 16 years now, and nothing is lost. I think we achieve a lot, but I think uh, the, the achievement, the most important achievement, is that we made a lot of things in development. We made a lot of things. Many countries has no track. Many countries has not. De okay, development center to develop their athletes and so on and so on. We were very hard on that. We started by a budget of $300 and we arrive at 15 million now every year going on to, to this, uh, to this area, area, area. Uh, uh, I think uh, I, I, living four years ago, five years ago in Doha here in Doha, it was said that IWF were going to bankruptcy. It was in all the newspapers in, in Great Britain. Bankruptcy. They were in bankruptcy zero for, in, in two years' time. I am leaving, I think, at the end of the year, we are really close to, to six, $67 million of reserve waiting. My dream was to have our sport back in the schools, if we want to keep 
our impact on the youth, we have to go to the schools. Me, I was a football player, but I achieved to be se selected in the French team for the Olympics. I achieved to be one of the best high jump, long jumper in the world in the 50s, because athletics was the best sport in the schools. I was preferred to play football, but I achieved this. We, and it, it, it arrives. I am happy to see that many countries, China, <laughs> Russia, I hope soon India will come to say, okay, we have to go, go in that direction in the only way to make it. I think this is one of the greatest achievements for me to say I'm living uh, I, in the security. We have a nice contract with Densu. I, I succeeded to make in 2000. But now we have already agreed this time the contract is con uh, reconducted till 2029. So the financial security of the is, is there. I was dreaming to have a sport, a sport, our sport universal, is universal. We go everywhere to organize meet, meetings. And uh, it continued to be strong in Europe. I was selling I how to maintain it very strong in Europe. And last but not least, I left uh, our last council meeting in Beijing by allowing the United States the possibility to organize our world championships. I have to be clear, people said you don't follow the rules. But I think this country is so strong in athletics. I achieved so great thing that it was a dream. We worked 33 years to try to have one city in the United States having a good stadium, having our meeting, our competition there, like in, during their trials in the Olympics, for nine days, shown by a, 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 a television like NBC. I think having achieved all this, I think we have done our job. Our job. When people ask me now, why didn't you, you know, do something else, make, how you call it, uh, men and women, he mix, ah, mix release. Uh, mix release, I said, it's not for me. <laughs> Someone can do that. I, I don't care about having two women and two men running, running together, it's not my problem. My problem was to have the women having the same problem than the, the men. It, at, at the men, it achieved, except 50, 50 kilometer walk. Work. I, every point I had on my agenda coming to IWF, a young man without no white hair in 1976, all the points I had in my program because I came in IWF like a mission. I don't come here to have a tie and say I'm a president or I was elected the most voted vice president in seven. But I was not there for be vice president, I was there to change the things. Everything has changed, but we have to continue because the world is always changing. Yes, I do understand nothing about your social media. It's my, in my grand, grandchildren. We explain me what is going on. Papa, uh, Papi, you have to look. This is the way to... I, I don't understand anything on that. It's not me. <laughs> so I, um, I was expecting to leave 11. I have to carry... It. The, the four year more, I think is okay now. And we achieve a lot. I will make our time now to sit down and make a book and tell you how we achieve all this in, our, uh, in, in the world, in athletics, and in other part of my life. But I, I think we have a, a, a great achievement. I do believe it's in good health. We have a good team. We selected a long time ago, six, eight years ago, we said this is the two people who can be our president. Two, six, eight years. It was I elected vice president, the two who were running, I elected them vice president in 2007. We are 15, 15. So no surprise, I think I have done my job. Now up to the next Congress and to continue in the future. And I wish the best. I think we will, we will have a great sport continuum.
and I hope that we in, in, I will, would be in good health to have my cane and to come and see from time to time. Thank you. My, the second part of the question, which is regarding the night marathon and 2000, <coughs> our bidding file for 2019. Just I would like to clarify that when we uh, submitted our uh, bidding file to the IWF Council and uh, we had a lengthy discussion and part of that is the is the night marathon and going back and looking to our file really uh, it says in bold that we need innovation innovation is something that we need it even in our life our sports is one of the sports that you could innovate a lot of things in this one. This is part of the life that we practice. I think when we proposed the night marathon, we did not propose it just because we sat on the table and said, okay, but we have practiced it, we have made a test for it, and we discovered that this, is, this part is going to be part of innovation, but to make that well structured, we have a plan that we will have night marathon practiced almost every year just to orient the international athletes on how to conduct the night marathon. And we will take all the measures to deliver the, one of the best night marathon in 2019 during the World Championship. So this is a dedication from us, and we will hopefully we will deliver something that you all feel proud about. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this was the last question because we also have the athletes. I kindly ask now Miss Sally Pearson, Miss Sallison Felix, and Mr. Mo Farah to come here at the table uh, for a photo with uh, our officials while we set the table for uh, the athletes. Please stand here. Waters, please, yes. No, President. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, Mr. Photographers. Gorgeous ladies. So we have checked here the podium. It stands the weight of the medals these three top athletes have gathered, Olympic uh, champions, and uh, the key figures of uh, athletics in our, in our times uh, right now. Uh, before I give the floor uh, to you for questions, I would like to ask uh, one question each, starting by um, uh, Alison, Alison, uh, we have the World Championships uh, in August. You start your season, and uh, obviously your eyes are set on the World Champs. Um, how do you feel about it? And especially since you start here in uh, Doha, you're almost a native now. Eleven times you've competed here in Doha. Um, I'm very excited to be here again. Um, I've run here several times, um, and it's always it's always a pleasure to come back and to compete and I'm just very excited for the season looking forward to world championships feeling good feeling healthy and so looking forward to getting started um, 
tomorrow night. Um, Sally, it's your second time here in Doha, if I'm not mistaken. Your first one was back in 2007. Um, what are your impressions uh, eight years after and uh, what would make you happy tomorrow? Well, I must say that the city has grown a lot since I've been here. It's obviously still hot, but I come from a place in Australia that um, is quite warm all the time as well, so I'm really liking the weather, but my expectations obviously for tomorrow night is to win. Uh, but everyone knows that the female 100 metre hurdlers are very fierce competitors and we always put on a good show for everyone. So it's going to be a very good race, but uh, I am in very good shape as well. So I do look forward to tomorrow night. And a question for Mo. Uh, Mo, we saw you yesterday interacting with young athletes, young kids, uh, which was a fantastic uh, initiative because it gave a uh, lot of courage to young kids. What, do your advice, what would your advice be to young uh, kids who want to be top athletes like you? Yeah, no, definitely. It's, yeah, it's about understanding about the sports and what it takes. Um, and it's always important to give back to something uh, like myself. Uh, I really enjoyed spending time with the kids and just playing with them and just, just talking to them. Because sometimes when they see us on TV, we're like this huge thing and they're like, wow. But really, you know, it just takes hard work and dedication and, and it's important that, you know, we share in this sport. Mm -hmm. Now the floor is uh, yours, gentlemen, who may want to ask a question. I don't want to monopolize. The gentleman on the uh, third row, please, pass on the microphone to Phil. Hello, Mo. Phil Minchell from the IWF. There's been some talk, not a lot perhaps, but some talk about a European record of 7.26. Is that in your mind for tomorrow's race? What are your aims and objectives for tomorrow? Yeah, no, it's great to be here in Doha. Uh, it's my first time in Doha and I've seen uh, with all the results, it, it is a fast track and normally, you know, it's an early start and uh, I don't normally start this early, but training's been going well and uh, I wanted to come here, test myself. Um, and if, if I look at the result in the last uh, three or four years, it's always been run there about like 7.30 and under. So it is possible, but at the same time, you know, you've got to respect the guys and um, try and race rather than times. But I think um, it depends on how the, how the race go. It, it is possible. Another question? Mr. Corey on the third row. Um, Elias again, Macori from Kenya. A question to more. The last few years you've been uh, training in Eten, and um, all of a sudden we didn't see you again. You went to Ethiopia. Um, what was the reason for the change of training? And again, talking, second question, um, talking uh, to Coach Salazar, he said it was a terrible mistake to go up to the marathon. Are you still thinking of the marathon again? Yeah, no, uh, to your first question, uh, I really enjoyed training in Africa, and, and that has worked for me for the last four or five years uh, when, you, when you're a distance runner it's important that you go high altitude training uh, working up in the mountains and that seems to work for me uh, and this year i wanted to just change things uh, i heard a lot about ethiopia which i really enjoyed uh, is a, it's about nine thousand feet above sea levels and uh, training has gone well there and um, i came back and broke the world record to my own door which i was really happy about first world, first world record um, so I was happy about that. And then the second question, to going back to it, um, would I change anything, uh, what I did in the marathon? In terms of preparation, I wouldn't change anything. I, I really enjoyed um, you know, the, the long process, putting 130 miles above week and week out, and just whole leading up to it the, the whole way, all the way. And running the London Marathon was, was, for me, was amazing to have so many people who kind of reminded me a bit like 2012, um, running in my, in my hometown uh, but in terms of results yes I would have wanted a better result um, it would have been nice to run fast times but sometimes you know as an athlete as we all do Alison and uh, Sally we all do sometimes it goes your way sometimes it doesn't and it's important that you learn from and uh, I learned a lot from the marathon and hopefully um, we we'll don't want to rush into it but I would like to try again at some point uh, but not not till after Rio May I remind you that uh, Mo will uh, be available to the media at the press point we have later on today. So I'll just uh, pop a question to Sally. Sally, 
you're the Olympic uh, champion in uh, the hurdles. But what, which was the toughest hurdle you had, uh, you had to overcome in your career up to now? The toughest hurdle I've had to come, overcome, I think, is, is pretty obvious with most athletes, is injury. Um, the injuries that I've sustained over the last two years were in my hamstrings and they were really disappointing for me uh, to get back from more mentally than physically. Um, I think it's really hard for to see people um, in front of you and trying to chase them down when you're really not in the best shape but for me I, I love to race and I love to compete and I think for me to get better and better is to keep racing even when I'm still not at 100% um, my body seems to to work that way really well and by the time the major championships come around I seem to be able to find something inside me to, to, to continue to get the medals every year so um, they are the toughest things to get over but they're the biggest things that an athlete can learn from and, and find ways to prevent them Thank you, Sally. We'll have time for a couple more questions because we have to liberate the athletes uh, for their training. The gentleman on the fourth uh, row, please. And then, Larry, it will be you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, there's a question from uh, um, David Harding, Agence France Press. Given the answer that's just be, uh, been given about night marathons and your answer about the marathon, um, would you be happy running a marathon at night and are you targeting the uh, race in Doha in 2019? <laughs> um, I don't know, just see what happens in terms of my career. Um, you know, as Sally says, sometimes we take it for granted. Sometimes, you know, athletes got a lot of injuries and it's important that, you know, you appreciate times and, and keep improving each year, stay injury free. Um, my aim in my career is to continue uh, collecting medals for my country, which I love doing now. But at the same time, you know, Sometimes you might need to, if you take your time's up, you might have to, to hang your spikes up. Um, but I want to carry on till probably 20, 2017 London World Championship and maybe after that go on to the marathon. Um, and going back to the other question in terms of marathon, is the night marathon, if it's, if it's proven, it's better for us in terms of climate, everything else, then why not? We've got to try something. Um, and I think sometimes, like, I look at athletics, I'm like, how do we make it exciting? And I think it can be exciting if, if, we, if we work together and, and, and build on it. Because, you know, all the time you see football on TV. And, and I love football. Like, even last night, I stayed up and watched the match. So it's important that, you know, we give back something to the sport and, and to build athletics. Um, I want to be able to see in terms of, you know, uh, like back in the days, like co over broken records. And, and just British public getting behind you again. Uh, before we move on with the next question, let me remind you that uh, more will be available at the press point right next door at the media center, so you may have all the time you need to ask questions to Mo. I'll put a question now to Alison. Alison, um, when you get injured, because this is something that unfortunately happens to all top athletes, how tough is it to find the strength and uh, get back into shape? both mentally and uh, physically, of course. It's definitely difficult, you know, dealing with the injury. Um, for me, coming back from tearing my uh, hamstring, it was definitely just getting back to the basics and being patient. And as an athlete, I think that's one of the hardest things is to be able to be patient and because you're, you know what your body can accomplish. And so when that's taken away from you, you really have to just take your time to get back. And so it's difficult, but I think if you can stay patient, you can see the bigger picture, you're able to you know, take that process slowly and um, eventually work your way back. Question to Larry. Uh, this is for Allison. Allison, the city games, the street games um, concept has become very popular in England. There's been talk about bringing it to the United States. Do you think track fans in the U.S. would accept an event like that? Definitely. I think that it would do really well in the States. I know all the athletes, um, we really enjoy um, participating. You really get to get up close with the fans. And I think the States would really do well with it because um, a lot of people who not necessarily would go into watch athletics into a stadium, we can bring it to them and show them the excitement of our sport. So I would really love to see it happen back in the States. We'll have time for one or more questions. You wanted to ask something? 
No. You have time at the press point, as I told you. The gentleman in the back. Finish. Yes, it's one for Sally. Jasmine Stowers has obviously made a huge breakthrough in your event this year. What was your reaction when you saw news of, firstly, her 1240? Were you going on the internet looking for YouTube coverage of the race? Um, I'm not very technological-minded, but sorry, no, I wasn't going to look for it on the, on the on the internet, but... Obviously very impressed. Um, it's exciting to know that there are other girls continually every year uh, running times that quick. Um, you know a lot about Harper Nelson, you know a lot about a lot of yes. the other girls. What do you know about Jasmine Stowers? Not a lot. <laughs> um, I, I've, never, I've actually never seen her race before on video or, or live. I've never raced her before, so I don't know a lot about her. But I, as I said, I think it's really exciting that there are a lot of the new generation athletes still coming through and running fast. Um, I'm actually really looking forward to racing her and obviously the other girls tomorrow night. Um, as I said before, I'm a fierce competitor. We all are fierce competitors, but for me, I, I, racing is really the one thing that I love to do. And so it will be interesting to see how we go against each other and um, who can take it tomorrow night. Let's take one final question. Who will be the lucky one to draw the last question? I guess it's going to be me. Okay, the gentleman there in the back. عاوز اسال الابطال عن انطباعهم حول المشاركه في جوله الدوري الماسي Hold on a second since you speak into Arabic if you want to use your uh, headphones Which one do you translate it? It's uh, channel 1 it's uh, channel 2 is for English Hold on You speak Arabic? No no <laughs> Can you have a the question is for whom? The three, please. All three? Yes. All three. Okay. Hold uh, on a second. Mohamed Al Jazar from the Jaridat Al Watan Al Qatariya. I ask the three athletes about their impressions about Qatar and their views on the Qatari teams, especially that Qatar will host the World Cup in 2019 for the strength and the World Cup 2022 for the strength and the strength. شكرا I think Qatar have done a fantastic job I'm take that off I think Qatar have done a fantastic job with their infrastructure. Um, obviously, <laughs> they seem to work around the clock 24 hours a day here, and they'll definitely get the job done. Um, I think it's a fantastic city that's continually evolving, so it'll be interesting to see what, what happens come 2019 and what the facility, facilities will be like. But I think, um, as I said, I've only been here twice before, but I think they've done a fantastic job in evolving their, their city. Um, and obviously the, the competition here for athletics in particular is always outstanding when I see it on TV and when I've raced here once before it was really well, but I think um, Qatar will do a fantastic job. I definitely agree. I think one of the exciting things about Qatar and about being here um, is that you know there's constantly new things happening, constantly new building, new innovation, um, and so it's just ex exciting. And there's been so many um, sporting events recently that have been hosted here, and so I'm sure that they will just continue on doing um, an amazing job. And you know, as athletes, will continue to be impressed. Yeah, no, it's, it's really exciting to be here. It's my first time in Doha, in Qatar. Um, I'm really impressed in terms of the facilities, and um, they, they just got incredible. Uh, my thought in the U.S. is more advanced, but here it's also amazing. Um, it's been staying in, in the Spire place, and it's got the indoor track, it's got the, the elevation rooms, and it's incredible. Man. And I think watching Doha World Champ, uh, Doha Indoor World Champs was, was amazing, and I believe they can do a great job. And, 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 and just saying keep up the amazing work and show the world what you can do. Okay, thank you very much. Now this brings uh, our press conference to a conclusion. I will ask now the, our athletes to stand up for a group photo. Uh, the photographers are kindly asked uh, to move forward for a brief photo opportunity. See you all tomorrow at the stadium. Thank you very much for your time.
the sixth edition of the Doha Diamond League will be taking place tomorrow at the Qatar Sports Club. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day, all of you. Thank you.